So welcome back to my channel. I should have been posting today or this weekend uh, the third video in the sequence of making this 1890s walking jacket. The footage that I have so far came to around about nine and a half hours, which even by YouTube standards is a little bit excessive and it's taken me an awful lot longer to edit all that down into a reasonable length video than I thought it would. So rather than have nothing to present this weekend, I have also been working on another project on the side and it's this 1947 McCall's pattern. I've made this dress four or five times now and I can do it without referring to the instructions. The construction itself is relatively straightforward, um, but I still made a mistake. I jumped the gun and I overlocked something that I shouldn't have overlocked and I had to unpick it. And as I was unpicking it, I remember a conversation that I'd had with a friend of mine uh, a good six months ago about whether or not she wanted to buy an overlocker. In the end, she bailed because she felt that it was too intimidating a piece of kit for her and that she would be far better sticking with her existing methods of steam, seam finishing. Well, that's fine. But when she said that it would take her hours and hours and hours to unpick everything, I was like, uh-uh, no way, honey. It doesn't take hours and hours. It's really quick. It's really simple. And you can totally do it without trashing your fabric. And here's how. I'm going to show you how to take overlocking out of a piece of fabric without trashing it. It's the quickest and easiest way that I found to take the stitching out. You could cut it out, but if your seam allowance is five eighths of an inch or half an inch, so that's your five eighths mark, you've lost almost a quarter of an inch out of your seam allowance. So it's generally not recommended to just simply cut the overlocking off. It's not always possible to do that either, especially if you're altering a modern garment that's got um, the overlocking done in place of a traditional seam. So the first thing that you need to do is work out whether you've got a three thread overlocker situation or a four thread overlocker. A four thread overlocker will have two looper threads. I've shown my looper threads in red and two needle threads. I've done those in blue just so that it's easier for you to see what I'm actually doing and which threads I'm attacking in which order. A three thread overlocker would just have one row of needle stitching. So you would just have the one row along the bottom. So it's, it's quicker to take out. Most modern domestic overlockers are either, either three or four thread. You can get five threads, um, but they tend to be the higher end, very spendy sort of overlockers. So the next step then is to work out which side of the overlocking you're working from. This set of stitches is what you would see as the fabric moves through the overlocker, regardless of whether you feed your fabric through with the wrong side of the fabric or the right side of the fabric facing up, this is what will appear on top as your fabric moves through the overlocker. This is what's underneath. Now you can see, you can see the shadow of the blue stitching through the cotton, but you can't really see any of the blue stitching on the underside and it looks sort of like a little tadpole or a seed head or a weird looking Y sort of a shape. That's your the wrong side of your overlocking. You, you don't want to be working from that side, you want this side. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. And what we're going to do is put our seam ripper into the blue needle thread and we're just going to pull it very very gently and you'll see that the overlocking tail gathers up a bit but it releases 
the stitches. Just going to move further along a bit because I don't really feel like. Oh, maybe it is actually. You might need to really, depending on whether you've got a tail of threads or not, you might want to repeat the in and pull a couple of times to give yourself a decent length of thread to work from. You want to try and hold the thread level with the fabric as you're removing it. What I tend to do is have the thread and the fabric pushed down onto my index finger. As you pull the thread, you can use your thumb and your forefinger to gather that thread up slightly. What I tend to do is wrap the excess thread around my fingers so that I've only got a very short pull on the thread. As it gathers up, you just work that gathering down the fabric. Pull a bit more, wrap a bit more, pull a bit more, wrap a bit more, pull a bit more. And there you can see that, that top line of thread is just sliding right out and then you're repeating that step come on dearest camera please focus repeating that step so you're wrapping your thread gathering Wiggling that gathering along. It's the wiggle and slide. There we go. And that's coming out as well. And then all you need to do is just, and it literally just peels off, peel off your red looper threads. It's very strange, I'm watching the, what my hands are doing through the camera, not my actual hands. So there you can see, I've got my th threads all off. The machine's left a few holes, those should press out, but it's not trashed my fabric and I've only lost a tiny, tiny amount of the seam allowance that I would have lost when I stitched the, when I put this through the overlocker it would have taken off a tiny bit of the, the fabric. So when I'm cutting I tend to leave a little bit more of my seam allowance than the pattern suggests and that way I can afford to lose some on the overlocking. So I'm going to show you what happens and you will have seen this on the inside of modern clothes where somebody's caught the looper thread and then pulled it. So I've got my looper thread there and you end up and it tightens and then you end up with a big loop. Now sometimes you can salvage this by inserting your seam ripper into several loops and just doing that. You might have to sort of maybe do one or two to get it back to normal. But it will come out. But if you've got all four threads that are the same colour and you've accidentally caught your looper thread, you can see it starts to pucker the fabric down together so you know you've caught the wrong thread. So 
so again it doesn't matter which if you've got two two sets of needle threads so four thread overlocker it doesn't matter whether you go from the bottom first or the top first I generally work from the top down can't see what I'm doing but again it's just that wiggle and slide And it's going to come out all in one, yeah, all in one massive go rather than coming out so that you can see it. And again, just pull the top needle thread, wrap it. Looper threads will just peel away. There you go. And again, just left some holes. They'll, they'll press out. Well, not on this because this is scrap fabric, but if you were working on an actual garment, these would press out and you'd be able to do what you need to do and then go back and overlock it. And that's how you do that. So I hope you enjoyed that relatively short little video on how to get rid of unwanted overlocking. I hope you find it useful. If it's a technique that you need to use in the not too distant future, because like if like me, you've overlocked something that you shouldn't have done and you need to try that technique, please do leave a comment below. Let me know how you got on with it, whether you found it useful. In the meantime, I will carry on editing my next video and hope that I can get that done in the next two weeks. The 1947 dress will be out two weeks after that. In the meantime, if you aren't already subscribed and you like what you've seen so far on the three videos, <laughs> three whole videos that I've done, uh, please do click subscribe, hit bell icon so that you get notified when I next upload. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.